So just keep in mind that if you were doing anything for the first time, especially under such stressful and anxious conditions, um, it might be a challenge. There might be highs and lows. Um, after I conclude our second meditation, I'll do a brief teaching and then we'll have a moment to check in before we, we head off and start the week. Does anyone have any questions before we start? You can put them in the chat if you have found where that is. All right, is anyone else feeling anything, anything besides stressed or anxious? You can also put that in the chat. Um, I'll share that I'm feeling um, uncertain. There's a lot of uncertainty. Okay. So we will begin by finding a place of non-doing. And I invite you to simply close your eyes. If it makes sense for you, if you want to turn your video off, you can. If you want to find any position that works for you, relaxing if you're on a couch, any, any position that will be a space of stillness for you, of simply being. And as you allow your body to become still, bring your attention to the fact that you are breathing. And become aware of the movement of your breath as it comes into your body and as it leaves your body. You don't need to manipulate the breath in any way or try to change it. Simply be aware of it and of all the feelings associated with the breath. And you might observe the breath deep down in your belly, feeling the abdomen as it expands gently on the in-breath and as it falls back towards your spine on the out-breath. Just being totally with each breath as it enters and exits your body. Not trying to do anything or get anywhere, simply being with your breath. You will find that from time to time, your mind will wander off into thoughts, fantasies, anticipations of the future or the past, to worries, memories. When you notice your attention is no longer here and with your breath, and without judging yourself, just bring your attention back to your breathing. 
and its constant flow. As you observe your breathing, you might find from time to time that you're noticing other sensations in your body. See if it's possible to expand your awareness from your breath to your face. Noticing if there's any tension around your eyes or your jaw. Just noticing it. If your brows are furrowed, you can let them relax. If your jaw is tight, can see what it feels like just to let it hang and just be. You move from your face to your shoulders. Just notice the natural position they've found. Any sensations in your chest? You might notice the rise and the fall. of your chest as the breath enters and exits. Bringing yourself to awareness of your hands. And just notice the position they've found for themselves. Just noticing they feel cool, warm. Any sensations in your hands. Without judgment, just noticing Each part of you has found its place in this moment. It's just fine. Continue to an awareness of your back. And down to your sit bones as they connect to the legs that carry you through your day. If you found your mind wandering or noticing anything other than your body or your breath, it's totally fine. Just notice it. Bring yourself back. 
Draw awareness to your feet. Noticing how they feel, where they are bearing weight. where they are feeling tension. Where they're feeling warmth. And when you're ready, Draw yourself back to a part of your body that you want to notice again. You might have noticed tension there. It might be your jaw, your hands, your shoulders. See if you can bring that part of you into awareness. Knowing that you can always come back to that part of you and give it attention at any time. And then bring yourself back to your breath. Noticing whatever natural rhythm it has found. Noticing perhaps if you can feel it on your upper lip. Noticing its constant renewing flow. And when you're ready, you can wiggle your fingers and your toes and bring yourself back to the room, the Zoom room. <laughs> Just take a minute to share anything in the chat that you might have noticed in yourself. Were parts of that hard? Were parts easier? What did you notice about your own experience of that just first moment of meditation together? Okay, so some focus feels better now. We're able to bring attention. Great. It allowed some relaxation. Okay, some tension in the neck relaxed. Sometimes just by noticing that has great power. And sometimes that noticing will be easier than others, depending on what's going on in our lives. Okay. So we'll move on now to our second meditation for the morning. And I invite you since we're waking ourselves up here together, um, to find what feels like a wakeful posture to you. So if it means that 
your hands are open and fingers slightly raised. If your back is straight, if you cross your legs, if you're able, you want to have your feet on the floor in front of you, whatever feels wakeful for you. And you can settle into it as we go. If it's drinking coffee, I see that. That's an important wakefulness step, of course. Um, water. <laughs> We're pragmatic here. Um, these are all things that bring us to mindfulness. So whatever you need to feel wakeful in this moment. Sometimes I do a little stretch of my face, which is just, just letting everything stretch out. It's very graceful. So when you find what feels wakeful to you in this moment, I invite you to close your eyes and just notice the temperature of your, the space that you're in. Notice if the parts of your skin that are exposed feel like a different temperature than the rest of your body. Notice any of those sounds that might be beckoning your attention. Right now, for me, it's an ambulance. So I hold that. Might be birds, footsteps from the person upstairs. Whatever it is, just notice it. Are there any smells hitting your nose? And then notice your breath. Yeah, and you don't need to manipulate it. Just, just notice it, its rhythm that goes in and out of your body as it enters your nose and your chest. Just notice that breath. And now, as you have this awareness of your breath, I'll ask you to bring to mind someone for whom you have deep feelings of love. See or sense this person and notice your feelings for them and just arise in your body. As you see their face, Notice what you feel in your body. Your chest might become warm. You, as you think of a time shared with this person, a smile might spread across your face. Whatever the effects, just allow them to be felt. And in your mind, say these words to this person who has given you these deep feelings of love. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you ride the waves of your life. May you live in peace no matter what you are given. Now, letting go of this person in your imagination, but keeping in awareness the feelings that have arisen, bring yourself to now. And see if you can offer that loving kindness to yourself by letting these words become your words. May I be happy. May I be healthy. 
May I ride the waves of my life. May I live in peace, no matter what I am given. Then noticing the feelings that arise and just letting them be. You know, when you're comfortable, try offering loving kindness to someone who has been a source of strength for you in any moment of your life. Way, whether they are living or in your memory, bring this source of strength to mind and imagine this person is in the room with you. What are they wearing? What's their facial expression? What might they say to you? And then let these words become your words. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you ride the waves of your life. And may you live in peace, no matter what you are given. And once your feelings flow easily to this loved one, to yourself, to that source of strength, turn your attention now to someone with whom you have difficulty. It's best not to start with the most difficult person but perhaps with someone who is an annoyance or just brings up feelings for irritation. Just pick the first one that comes to mind. It's just for this moment. And see if you can let these words become your words to them. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you ride the waves of your life. And may you live in peace, no matter what you are given. Just notice the sensations and feelings that arise as you say those words to that person. If it's hard, if it's easy, if it just doesn't work, all of that is just fine. Just notice it. After the Israelites are freed from Egypt, they wander for what to them is an unknown but prolonged period of time. Their journey is a period of uncertainty. They find clarity and purpose when the Torah is given at Sinai, but in the weeks, years between their freedom and that revelation, there is meandering and challenge. And it is a custom to mark the weeks between Passover and Shavuot by counting each day. This is called counting the Omer. And it amounts to counting 49 days or seven weeks. This wandering period of uncertainty 
and newness was also thought to be filled with the potential for growth, for repair of the self, the soul and one's character. And last week was the first week of this practice and the focus was loving kindness or chesed. The focus was love and how to grow love within us. And this week, we are in the second week of the counting, and we focus on strength or self-restraint. In Hebrew, it's givura. And we may think of love and strength as opposites. However, the sages believed them to be in relationship. Sometimes our love is shown through self-restraint. In the words of Alan Marinus, self-restraint works for us in a positive way when it helps us say no to those desires that are not nourishing. And self-restraint is negative when it keeps us from doing things that are actually good for the soul. Givura, or strength, our focus this week, is not rigid or inflexible, no, this strength is enduring, which means it has to be flexible. It means having a strength of purpose that moves with change, consistently moving towards goals and adapting in order to grow. What does it look like for you to flex your love and your strength in this moment? It may not be earth shattering like revelation at Sinai, but just bringing these traits into awareness in your mind is holy. And just as the Israelites did wandering in the desert, when there is so much else in this world we cannot control, that we cannot know, we can remind ourselves we have the power of self-awareness. And this week, of counting, we're reminded of our superpower, our enduring strength. And we are called upon to balance it with love for the good of all. In moments of uncertainty and flux, growth can unfold within us when we hold love and strength in flexible balance. And so, as we end our practice, when you're ready, you can relax your attention, wiggle your fingers and toes, and receive this blessing. Yevarechcha Adonai v'yishmerecha. May God bless you and keep you this week. Ya'er Adonai pana ve'lecha v'kunecha. May God's light shine upon you and be kind to you. Yisa Adonai Pana Velecha V'yasem Lecha Shalom. When God's light does shine upon you, may it bring you awareness and the peace that comes from balancing your love with your strength and enduring in uncertain times. I wish you a Shavua Tov, good week. I'm happy to hang around for a little bit. Um, and I would love to know just how you're doing. If you have a minute before you leave for work or your next thing, you can share in the chat. Um, or I think at this point you can unmute yourself and um, if we try and talk one at a time, 